So you want to work at the busiest spaceport in Europe? Well, I'm there right now in Saxevoord in the Shetlands, the northernmost point in all of the United Kingdom, just south of 60. Um, and this is a perfect place for polar launches, just as good as the location that Peter Beck chose in New Zealand, except in the opposite hemisphere. However, if you make the decision to work for this particular spaceport in such an isolated remote place, you have to go through a lot to get here and a lot to live here. And I got a short exposure to everything that the people who live in these islands have to go through if they want to live here. And let me tell you, it is a labor of love. Now it's time to bring you the experience from up top. I'm very happy that they allow people to come up here, as long as they're smokers, right? And uh, getting a quick look at Aberdeen in, once again, typical Aberdeen weather. This is going to be an interesting journey, to say the least. So I happen to be fortunate enough to have a cabin, thanks to you guys largely. It's not particularly expensive, but the majority of people who travel this way do not get these sorts of luxuries. But at the same time, needing to have some safe place for equipment and also a place to record things... I'm fortunate to have this. Other people stay in what's considered to be a pod lounge where there is a little bit of separation between the sleeping pods, but not much. If you sit up, you'll be able to see your neighbor right there. So, uh, and then that actually costs extra as well. And then if you don't want to pay for that, then you're essentially sitting in what amounts to be um, reclining chairs like you would have on an airliner, except uh, you, uh, you're you on there for 12 hours, which I guess there are some flights that go there. That long but nevertheless that's what uh, some people do everybody does what they have to do given the circumstances and some people make this transition this trip on a very regular basis Now, rather horrifyingly, I have discovered that uh, this boat, and I noticed it sways a lot, and I'm like swaying a lot at this very moment, actually, and I was wondering, is it because of the North Sea? Is it you know, it just felt more like a uh, ship or a sailboat than it felt like some sort of cruise liner? Um, and I came to discover that this is more of a flat bottom ferry, not very dissimilar from the Staten Island Ferry, something 
something that's more suited to the Mediterranean or to the Caribbean, not to the North Sea. This thing actually can't handle rough weather and never sails in rough weather. Um, as I say, rather horrifyingly, I came to this dis discovery, um, but fortunately, there isn't rough weather, at least not in the forecast during this trip, nor on my return trip. But even with deep, drafted vessels, things can get scary as hell on this transition. I suppose the proper word is transit. Nevertheless, I'm a bit distracted right now. It's, uh, it's interesting feeling the sway of this thing. But uh, anyway, uh, people have experienced some pretty extreme things. I've had a chance to talk to some of them who, who take this ferry on a regular basis, and even the deep drafted ones. And uh, when things are incredibly rough, they have to belt their kids into their beds. And uh, sometimes when things get extremely rough, you've got suitcases flying from the floor to the ceiling um, on the outer hull of the ship, any cabins that are uh, happen to be out there. And during extreme weather, there have been some experiences where they gathered everybody into one central area um, to minimize the amount that they were pitching about. And from what I gather, that was also quite terrifying. So it's not an easy or a casual decision that people make when they choose to live in the Shetlands and when they choose to make this trip all the time. But let's stop talking about the ferry and let's talk about where we're going and what we're going to see. Whatever you may have heard about Saks of Ord is woefully out of date at this point. It is a two-person endeavor. Frank Strang and Debbie Strang, who have long held property in this area and now are opening this ambitious spaceport at the location of an RAF facility. As a matter of fact, I'm going to be staying in an RAF officer's quarters. But there are a lot of facilities that are going to be built here, including at least two launch pads, possibly three, and on top of that, a satellite integration facility. Construction is already underway, and as a matter of fact, the pads are going to be largely complete by November, at least as far as I've been told. So we're going to be seeing construction in process on all of this, and although the articles you may have read said that there's about 24 people working there, actually it's closer to about 80 at this point. It is an extremely ambitious project with at least seven different launch providers flying out of this facility. But first, we need to get there. So it's about 2300 hours, 11 p.m., however you guys want to look at that. And uh, people are still up at the pub enjoying themselves, etc. But uh, I want to get up early because right now it's just nothing but driving rain and just uh, black and cold out there. And I'm hoping that the light will come up a bit and I can give you a view of this magnificent island chain that we're going to be approaching here shortly. So in the meantime, good night. in the morning um, slept pretty well actually for the most part um, but the ferry is pitched a lot more off and on during the night and it actually is pitching quite a bit at the moment um, and uh, I think it makes more sense to just get up now and see what we can see although I'm sure it doesn't look like I'm ready to get up and it doesn't feel that way either time to get going. Very quiet. Very quiet indeed. And once again, we're going to be docking in 90 minutes. Less than 90 minutes, actually. So, people are doubtlessly making their preparations and such. Maybe a long night in the pub taking a bit of a toll, I don't know. 
what I do know is that sleep wasn't really that bad. I expected it to be a lot worse. I did feel the roll of the ship a lot in the course of the night, but it never really disturbed me that much. So, it's still black as pitch outside. Oh, listen to that. <laughs> That's a bit unsettling. Where we're headed, I'm gonna be landing here in Lurk in about an hour or so. And then our path is going to be taking us to one ferry and then another off the map actually to the northern part of Unst is where Saxaport is located and that's where we're going.